down piracy. We're an anti-piracy service that pretty much all the studios in the adult industry uses. And we also work with some mainstream companies as well. Uh, we've been around for about six years, although I've been in the industry for 16, which is crazy. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much us, kind of a very brief nutshell there. Okay. Lauren. Uh, I'm Lauren McEwen, Seven Veils Media. I do social media strategy and management. So what that means is basically for, for brands, I actually uh, run their their social media, all the marketing, all the engagement, everything like that. Okay. I'm Bob. I'm Bob Christian with Adam and Eve. Um, uh, Adam and Eve has been in business directly marketing to consumers for over 40 years. I've been with them for just under 20 years. Um, I'm director of new business development, not directly involved in the web, so I hope I can make a contribution. But no, 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 this I'm, goes um, beyond the web. We'll, we'll see. And um, we enjoy the advantage of not being a um, uh, filthy fucking pornographer. So, <laughs> but Bob, um, you are a filthy fucking pornographer. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't realize it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just a promoter of filthy fucking pornography. Excellent. So. <laughs> and Nate is a defender of filthy yeah. fucking pornography. That's right. <laughs> I guess I am the filthy fucking pornographer. <laughs> And we have Tom Himes back here because we have a small panel today. So Tom, do feel free to just jump in on shit because you're so good at this. If you want to come up here and sit down. No, no, no. You're okay. <laughs> so anyway, Tom is sort of our, our fifth man back there, or fourth man, as it were. So. Um, That's true. Right, right. Let's start out with a general overview of what <clears throat> we're kind of talking about. Um, not only has Google grown and flourished and prospered, and, but in the course of doing that over the last several years predominantly, Google has come out with Panda and Penguin, which basically decimated a lot of organic, the way that we were used to doing business. And then several months ago, they basically threw most of the adult industry out on their ass, not allowing them to purchase traffic anymore uh, through the AdWords program. And that's kind of the prime example, but I've seen it, everything from like Cosmo magazine, you know, our shush porn for women site or erotic for women. For years, we did display advertising and online. All of a sudden, oh, family friendly. You know, we don't want them going anyplace. You know, you can, they can read articles about how to give a better blowjob so your boy to, boyfriend doesn't dump you, but my God, no advertising for adult. You see it in all kinds of sectors. I went to um, Affiliate Summit in New York a couple of months ago, and what used to be you could get backroom deals with these sort of pseudo mainstream affiliate networks, they're now all family friendly. And I don't even know what that means. Um, so does anybody want to just talk in general terms so we're defining this thing of your impressions of what this is, other examples of it, or why is it happening before we get into how to deal with it? Well, the, the, the most hypocritical thing is that Google treats you like that and you're a, you do your, you, you pay your talent, you do everything on the up and up, and they, but they don't want any part of you. If you were putting that same content on your site, and this is just from my from my experience. I'll, you know, I'm a I'm a single issue voter on some of this stuff. Um, if you were putting that same content on your site as the user uploaded, and you weren't paying the talent, and you weren't paying studios, Google loves you. That's the greatest hypocritical part, I think. Like, I don't think they're family friendly. At all. I think they're Google friendly. Uh, I think they care about themselves. And I have a relationship with Google. I'd rather them work with me sometimes than never, but like, I don't think they're family friendly at all. <laughs> so just in general, do you feel that there is a kind of a, on one hand, after sort of the Fifty Shades of Grey phenomena, and Susie in Kansas is now joining porn for women's sites and ordering light bondage equipment, on one hand in mainstream, but in other ends that porn is being ghettoized and repressed more for, for like actual porn, not Fifty Shades of Grey porn. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I, I think it's a pendulum. I think the pendulum goes uh, as they do back and forth. And in this case, um, I, I don't know this. So you're just asking for opinions that the um, that Fifty Shades did bring out so much um, that so the whole industry benefited from. But we, and we talk about mainstream acceptance and the market broadening, and we generally say that's all really very good. On the other hand, it brings out the the filthy pornographers and and. You know, we, we pounce on the opportunity, and then maybe they say, oh, a little too much of this, we have to crank it back. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not sure there's anything, I mean, it's it's serious and it's difficult to navigate, but it's, I, I think it's pendulum related. Mm -hmm. Lauren, from a social media viewpoint, 
you know, we know that Facebook has never been the only place you would ever want to go as far as healthy pornography. Right. But you know, we've got we've got the Twitter sphere, but you've also got surprise things like Tumblr, Tumblr, which is the biggest archive of porn in the world. Suddenly, you can't do an internal search in Tumblr for any adult terms anymore. So maybe just talk about that in the social sphere. Right. I mean, all right, so in the social sphere, it, I mean, it's very frustrating because it is very hypocritical. You know, it's like um, on Facebook. Uh, obviously, you can't put any uh, adult content out there. Of course, you also can't put anything about breastfeeding. So, you know, it's like, hey, you know, you have things that are mainstream that are being lumped into adult. There is very blatant discrimination. Like, you know, you might be able, dating sites can have apps and things like that on, on Facebook, but if you mention anything about gay in an ad, you're going to get rejected. Um, you know, I mean, these, these are kind of these ongoing problems and there was a while when people said oh well if you take porn off of the social media networks that you know they're going to collapse well you know Facebook ironically kind of took it to task and I say ironically because they started off as a way for people to figure out who's single so they can date and hook up I mean you know ultimately that was actually at the core of kind of what Facebook was but you know they're they've become really um, homogenized into truly mainstream corporate America and defining what family friendly means for the people who are on there they also define what content you're going to see, you know, the myth of if you put it on Facebook, people are going to see it. Well, that's actually not true. You know, so then you have Tumblr, who was like the mecca of like great images and gifts for adult stuff. Like you wanted to see great memes and, and great dirty pictures and dirty memes, which were even better. You know, you could go to Tumblr and you could find pretty much anything. Well, then they started killing off very selective keywords including keywords that were sex educational keywords, like bisexual, for instance, was one of the first keywords that they put off because bisexual was like too taboo. It's like, excuse me? Homosexual, also too taboo. So, you know, you have this, you definitely have this undercurrent of ongoing discrimination. And then, um, then they just recently got rid of, of indexing so that way if you do use any of these keywords and you go to Tumblr to search, you can still put your content there. You're just not searchable, which is an issue. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that it can't be there, so then you have to utilize other networks to search. So if you did, like, uh, you know, went to Twitter and did blowjob Tumblr, sure, you, now you've hit the jackpot, you're going to find all of the Tumblrs as long as the people are cross-promoting, and that's actually now the way that you have to, you have to do that. So um, there is, like, with this, this kind of uh, hegemonizing of all of the, the different networks, you know, it's, it's interesting to see how they... Are, are really restricting more and more adult, but also what they're defining as adult. Like a lot of the erotic, like Fifty Shades opened up with a lot of the erotic um, kink and BDSM photography. What defines something as art? There's actually, there was this great Facebook page that what they did was specifically push Facebook to the point till they got shut down, and then they write an article about how they got shut down, and they got shut down for the Statue of David. This struck me this week. Uh, uh, with, there's the pendulum thing is in play, but there's contradictions or dichotomies that are that are so striking that are going right now and actually happening right here at this show. CNBC is doing, as they invariably do at the beginning of Jolling, a ton of coverage of the adult industry. They are here at the show. They went with Bonnie Rotten and uh, I forget who else, another for uh, Jesse Jane to the to a shooting range yesterday. They did a story, they threw it up. And um, you'll see that they've done a number of those. And you will on CNBC, you'll go find them on NBC.com, you'll go find them. Obviously, NBC is owned by Comcast. And let's not forget that many of these social networks are also owned by huge corporate entities, okay? And they play a role, a very new, evolving role in, in, in their structures and wherever they're going. And I, I, I feel that the industry is, is in many ways being screwed through this. And let me just explain to you one thing about CNBC. You go to at Google News and you put in Bonnie Rodden or Jesse Jane or Shooting Range, and that CNBC story, the CNBC story will come up. You will see it right there on the front page. But if AVN.com covered the same thing, and we do, we have a story, you will not find it. Why? Because Google News does not spider AVN.com or XBiz.com, where, where I worked for several years. And I have been down that road with them for many years. The reason they don't do it is because they will not spider a website 
that has a direct link to offensive, what they call offensive material, even though they have more explicit content on their site than you could ever yeah. find. Well, okay. So now NBC, CNBC is getting the benefit of that traffic through Google, and whereas the news that they're covering is ours and we get none. Well, like you'd be able to put an ad for Game of Thrones on Google, but you try to do an erotic photography site, name one, and you're not going to be able to because the erotic photography, like even like kinky erotic right. photography, anything like that, won't be able to put an ad because it's considered adult. Game of Thrones has more explicit violence and sex and rape right. than you know pretty much anything you're going to find in adult. But they're allowed to advertise because they they're mainstream and it's HBO. I mean, I, I don't know if y'all seen the video. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Uh, it's not porn. It's HBO. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's awesome, but, you know, as tongue-in-cheek and as funny as it is, like, that actually boils it down. No, 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 it's not porn, it's HP. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, you can complain to yeah. Google all you want. But they don't care. I don't, I don't think they care. So no, they don't care. I, I think this is about finding other avenues. Google, yeah. yeah, they don't, they don't uh, apply that same adherence that they do to AVN to any pirate tube sites. <laughs> they right. love those sites. Right. And we can report tens of thousands. Yeah. I've literally reported a... a clients work on a pirate tube site to Google and they refuse to remove it. And I said, look, there's there's clear infringement there. And they said, well, if you want to keep reporting it, you can. <laughs> That's their approach. I mean, they have sites where, like, for a particular performer, when you Google her name, some site that out of, you know, Latvia that has, you know, four visitors a day is on the first page of Google when there's nothing from ABN or XBiz or Hotmoot or, or even anything her site. Like that. Or even her.com. Her yeah. right. They yeah. definitely ghettoize uh, any site that's that's adult, that's legitimate adult. But if you're a pirate site, they look like Well, I mean, great. you know, I've been digging into the whole thing of why Google, how their organic rankings have changed. And so if you type in the word blowjob, <clears throat> you'll get the top listing, of course, will be Wikipedia with the etymology and the history of the word blowjob. <laughs> And then you will get Red Book with the article about how to give a better blowjob so your boyfriend doesn't dump you. And then you get five similar ones from Ladies Home Journal and Cosmo and whatever down the page. And then when you get to page two, then you start getting blowjob links to tube sites. Mm -hmm. Well, stolen content, or maybe not stolen, but it's certainly not benefiting anybody except the honeypot of the tube that's trying to sell little blue penis pills and fuck a fat lady live chat. Um, not until you get to page seven do you get to a really nice site called Art of the Blowjob. It's uh, Sophie Delancey yeah. involved yeah. with it. And that's the best one in the world. If you, you know, if I'm searching, seven, you're, you're dead. I mean, who, who yeah, goes that But if, if I'm searching for blowjob, you know, I want to see the Art of the Blowjob. So why did I get a bunch of shit from mainstream? Why did I get five pages of stolen tube shit? And not until page seven do you actually get to the legitimate site. Well, I mean, and that's part of the reason why Colin Well, no, there's a reason why. Where to go. Yeah, well, yeah, because well, we, we can plug that in a second. <laughs> and we will. Look, looking and at we it will. more, <laughs> more <laughs> looking at it more carefully, though, what, what their their organic scheme, um, as far as ranking at the moment, is um, authority. So Wikipedia is the authoritative voice. Um, Cosmo, Red Book, Lady Who's Journal. You know, they're so they have their shit is so deep all over the web. They're considered authority. Their next criteria is how long do people stay on the site, and how many pages deep do they go, and how many pages are on the site. Well, look at the tubes. I mean, they're up one million pages deep, and people go there for nine minutes as opposed to out of the blowjob, but somebody might go for three minutes. Here is a kind of fun workaround of somebody if you're actually invested to putting the time in and you can pull it off. So, and some people can do it. If you've ever edited Wikipedia, anybody can put anything on Wikipedia. They approve it. So you can actually get your site listed on Wikipedia. So your site might not come up on Google, but it could come up through Wikipedia on Google. So the, the key, yeah, the trick is, is you have to have enough um, external sites linking you, and you cannot do it from your own like domain URL. You cannot show that you are affiliated. So you know, I would have Nate if I wanted him to, you know, to do my site. I would have him put it in there because you can't promote yourself. Wikipedia doesn't like you to do that. But, you know, so when you get that article on CNBC, you use that to reference yourself, and now all of a sudden you can get your own Wikipedia listing on Google. Like I said, it's a pain in the ass. I hate editing anything with Wikipedia. It's awful. However, if you can do it, it actually gives you some fantastic yeah. ranking. And the other thing you can do is if you're in a 
sector of <clears throat> the adult industry, you know, we, we, we have, we've got the advantage of having a porn or erotica for women's site, shush.com. It's gotten a lot of coverage from your tango and Cosmo and Huffington Post and all of these people. Yeah. So if you type in forum for women, you're never going to see shush.com until page 7,965 because it's only a three-page store with, you know, with, okay. with a traditional thing. But that first page of your tango and Cosmo and whatever.